Okay, so we are going to start the program. Okay. Okay. Ah, okay. <clears throat> One, two, three, four, start. Hello, everyone. A good evening to all of you, and cordial welcome to our session, Future Trends of Women Entrepreneurship. So we are having a good number of panelists in this session. And I, Beauty Arthur, welcome you to the session. Uh, first of all, I would like to say that uh, the day by day, the trends of entrepreneurial activities are changing. So within that change, how we can cope up with this world and what are the future trends we are having in the future. So to discuss about these issues, we are bringing the experts in front of you. So I would like to welcome our panelists to our session. Before that, I was, I'm going to introduce them to all of you. First of all, we have with us Anna Maria Chares, Director, Entrepreneurship World Cup, Global Entrepreneurship Benson Center of Entrepreneurship. And the last we have with us, Dr. Tina Alden, founder of Nations of Women. Okay, so before starting our session, I would invite you to introduce yourself to our audience. So starting from Anna Maria Torres. Thank you. Thank you everyone for joining today. And um, first of all, Congrats to everyone for making this session possible and to join us celebrating the Global Entrepreneurship Week in 180 nations. Uh, this is an initiative uh, that started at the Global Entrepreneurship Network, uh, an organization that I'm proud to represent here today. And thanks to our president, Jonathan Ortman, who uh, started this process of celebrating in one week uh, the talent and innovation and all the power that entrepreneurs can bring together to solve one of the most precious and, and, and hardest problems that we have, uh, not just this year, of course, but, but, uh, but historically, right? So thank you all for joining us today. I am the director of the Entrepreneurship Work Hub. Uh, this is an initiative that we launched last year. And I'm, I'm, I'm privileged to, to, to launch this program all around the world. We're working with 175,000 entrepreneurs from 200 countries this year. And, and here I am. Uh, I have been an entrepreneur myself. I have more many hats, so I've been part of the whole ecosystem. And my role is to create an enabler entrepreneurial ecosystem that facilitates and, 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 and encourage entrepreneurs to launch their ideas, to grow their business, and to be successful. In that sense, as I said, I've been working in the finance work with investors, I've worked with academia, I've worked with the governments, I've been in the policy making, uh, and, and as an entrepreneur myself, I think I understand uh, from different angles and different visions uh, the challenges of today, and, and leading that entrepreneurship work cap, it's, it's a pleasure, and I invite you all to, to, to learn more about it. Uh, thank you so much, Anna, uh, for your information. We are Devon International University, the proud host of Entrepreneurship World Cup from the very beginning in Bangladesh. Yes, so Katerina, would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, oh, everyone, and congratulations, Beauty, and your great, great, great team for this amazing conference because I, I never saw such a professionalism. Uh, everything is in place on time, so it's absolutely something to, to be congratulated. Uh, secondly, I would like to also uh, say hello to my colleagues, panelists today. I'm from Croatia, a small country at the Adriatic coast. Um, we are well known for sportsmen, for athletes in the world. You, everybody knows our football players, but uh, let me tell you that also entrepreneurship is uh, growing in Croatia, uh, especially from 1991 when I started my small company. So I'm entrepreneur nearly 30 years 
and 23 years I'm a volunteer. So my big volunteer project was joining uh, GW as a host uh, for Croatia in 2007 when it was launched. And I'm happy that today a lot of universities around the country are celebrating Global Entrepreneurship Week and uh, youth are really, really so impressed with what Jonathan did. And I always say he is my biggest mentor. He is a person with the biggest vision and he never knew, I, I am sure, that it will uh, grow so, so, so big. So I'm very honorable uh, and honored that I can be the part of this big, big historic story. So uh, also uh, just to tell you that um, on this day, I remember my first conference on women entrepreneurship held in Croatia, organized by United Nations Economic Commission for Europe. That time I was for the first time in my life a speaker and I had a big task to explore what women are doing in business. So I then learned that women are employed even more than men. Thank you, Katerina, for a long and generous words. And uh, now would you like to invite Dr. Tina Alton to say a few uh, uh, words about herself? Thank you so much for having me. I hope you can hear me. Yes. Um, uh, it's a pleasure to be here with all of you. Um, I'm the CEO and President at Nations of Women. And uh, like, you know, my colleagues here, I wear several hats. So I'm a mom of seven children, one granddaughter. I've been an entrepreneur for two decades now. Um, I've been in the health industry, um, health, health tech space, fintech. Um, and um, depending on, you know, day, uh, time of the day de de determines what you would find me doing. You know, sometimes I'm sure like yourself with this pandemic, particularly it's been less and less of business owner to more and more of, you know, care for whether it's family or for employees or, you know, for our own self and, and our wider community. So um, that aside, um, I worked in um, investment sector, uh, work with governments, work with corporations, other businesses as well, and mental businesses to help them to start, grow, and scale their business. And um, what else? Uh, <laughs> most recently, my my biggest um, goal really is working with you know women from across the nations, and really looking at building a global multi-ethnic, multi-cultural, multi-racial. A full coalition of women um, that would stand up, step up into in, into their purpose, calling to serve, influence to actually bring difference to the nations. Um, we have been developing programs um, around leadership, business, financial literacy, person skills, uh, person development. We know that you know for all of us as, as female entrepreneurs that. Uh, our self-development and self-growth actually um, is the biggest priority because when we are growing and developing and, you know, on top of our game, we're able to perform better and be able to give the best of ourselves. So um, in the midst of all of that is teaching women a little bit more kindness, both to themselves and to their family and into their community, teaching them a bit more about innovation you know, where we're not... Um, inventing the wheel, um, and also um, leading from a place of integrity. Because I think, um, not just fake news, but um, we, we really are in, in the, that time of the world where integrity needs to be at the forefront of everything we do. So that's um, just a little bit about myself and what I'm currently doing. Thank you. So uh, uh, we are really inspired by your experience that you have shared with us. So three of you have a great experience, over 15 years of experience in entrepreneurship. So my first uh, question to, to, to Anna Maria Torres. So as you have a good number of experience, what have you seen? What are the trends has been changing over the days? Because 15 years ago, the trends of entrepreneurship after the 15 years and after the 15 years, what are the changes you can see and what should the, do the women are equipped with the uh, 
with the digital changes or so on? Can you share a little bit things about it? Sure. Um, okay, I have to say that after being so many years involved in, in the ecosystem, especially being a woman myself, um, it's, it's quite astonishing to see that it's a global recognition of the power that women bring uh, as, as an economic active um, make changer and, 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 and player in a whole global ecosystem. So just the fact that globally we have recognized the power that we have, women represent 66% of the world's force, but however, they only earn 10% of the world's income. At the same time, they have 85% of the consumer power but only uh, they, they, they're not active members of, 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 the, of the, the making decisions at the highest level in the countries, at the highest level in, in politics, at the highest level in economics, at the highest level in art. So I think just recognizing, having that consensus that is important, that is key, it's, it's a major achievement. Uh, globally, I think there's been a movement towards understanding better what can be done and how can we uh, do it better. And I have to say, there is a long way to do, of course, but we're studying. We're studying in a position where countries are acknowledging the importance and the relevance of women being in business, of women as a key players on the economy, and measuring that. Because one thing is what we think and what we see that is important, but another one is when we have results and when we have measures of what the impact that is created in the economies is when we really realize that we need to invest more. And I'm really happy to say that up to now and recently, we have very worldwide facilities um, facilitating financial access, which is something very dear to me. I spent many, many years of my life um, working on financial inclusion, and, and most of the financial inclusion, of course, the beneficiaries were women. At the global level now, I see it a uh, facility like the, the Women's Entrepreneur Finance Initiative at the IFC, it deployed since eight, uh, 2018 more than $120 million. Uh, and in the private sector, we've seen uh, that, that, that the, the increments of private equity and funding has increased. It, it is not enough, again, um, they increase it since, since the last couple of years is more than $2 billion devoted to finance SMEs in the private sector. However, there is a long way to go. I'm proud to say that we're doing some steps, but there is a long way to go. Here in London, for example, uh, for one pound that is raised in private equity, only 13 pins go to a woman. <laughs> So, and, and we're talking about one of the most finance developed uh, 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 hubs of innovation and in the world. So uh, I'm, I'm saying, what I'm saying here is that there is a recognition, we're making some progress, uh, but there is a lot that needs to be done. And especially the fact that we would love to see more entrepreneurs and more women starting businesses and going all what I call the cycle. So being a business, then successfully exiting their business, if that's what they wish to do, and then investing in others or sharing their knowledge, that is really, really important. Just now being part of a peer community. Women, we, we need a lot of um, a, a, a support system. And that support system varies from country to country, varies from culture to culture, and varies from woman, right? Like what you need is not exactly what I might need. But what is important is that we recognize that we must have that support system. And in that support system, I wanted to bring out that entrepreneurship World Cup because uh, there's never been a better uh, integral program and initiative all around the world where startups or, or founders can mingle, can connect themselves, can have access to resources on a plug and platform. It's totally free, it's totally free, but it's given an, an opportunity for entrepreneurs to have the tools, to have the resources they need to launch their business, to grow their business, regardless the stage where they are, regardless the sector where they are, and regardless the country where they're based. 
So it is important that we recognize that they are global initiatives at the same time as NASH at the national level. They're great initiatives that have been growing that are important, tapping important challenges such as access to finance, such as recognition of the importance of the role that the woman play, and also the importance of having those networks. It has never been a better time <laughs> for women to launch their business. Yes. It has never been a better time to pivot yourself, to check what is doing, and take advantage of all the learning that it's available uh, online now that we're in lockdown. So thank you so much, Anna. You talked about you talked about some about that uh, the uh, women are getting some facilities through your even entrepreneurship World Cup. Women have actually joined entrepreneurship World Cup. They got the chance and they got the chance to access to taking these such initiatives from Jane. And now I'd like to know from Katrina, uh, mentored so many uh, projects, so many entrepreneurs even. So evaluate these things, that the future entrepreneurial activities that the, pay, the women are having. Uh, thank you, uh, Beauty, for this uh, for this question, and I would fully agree with uh, uh, with Anna. Uh, while uh, in Croatia, uh, just to give you a brief uh, glance, uh, how do we look in Croatia in terms of uh, women entrepreneurship? Uh, Croatia is four point million uh, inhabitants, and half of the population are women but less than a quarter uh, are entrepreneurs. So 50%, 56% of them are in service industry and the rest of them are in uh, health, um, welfare, education, uh, technology, and some other sectors. Uh, but um, uh, the age when they start uh, the business, their, their startups is around 35 to 44. And uh, what is very significant uh, that um, uh, in uh, 100 unemployed, uh, 15 women start, uh, start business uh, in comparison to only five men. Uh, but uh, to come back to the EU average uh, is 30% uh, of uh, women startups. I would say that um, at this time of pandemic, uh, made us uh, uh, very, very close all over the world and that benefits women for sure. Uh, I see these days that uh, many women are starting their businesses and uh, new products. They used to produce something for the friends, family. Now they found out that this is the best time to start the business and even big companies are helping them to market this uh, products and to, to, to go to the shelves uh, to the customers. So uh, at the end of the day, uh, this is a very bad, bad, bad global uh, thing what happened to every one of us actually is bringing something, something good around the world and in Croatia as well. In terms of digital nomads, uh, in terms of uh, uh, unicorns, uh, there, are, there are companies recognized by uh, foreign investments but uh, what I would like to see to, to stay is that um, in terms of uh, prosperity, the future, uh, which will, uh, which will uh, really uh, uh, be dedicated to women entrepreneurship, uh, I can say it because um, the OECD is um, uh, in a G20 meeting in 2021, they will have their, on the agenda women entrepreneurship. This is very positive. And uh, while we are in the European Union, the body which, uh, which can help us in this, and we have to collaborate, of course, uh, all countries in European Union, is European Commission, which also has some, some uh, new possibilities for uh, entrepreneurship and, and uh, women entrepreneurship. But I would like to stress that GN and GW are the very are the best platforms produced, created so many years ago for every entrepreneur to go there, to connect, 
to, to find the, the resources and to, to show to the world what uh, she has or he has. And uh, if we uh, can all remember a proverb, um, I would like to tell you at, uh, at the end is the, if you, go to, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go uh, uh, far, then we have to go together. That is my mission in my life after the war. I lived in Croatia in the city of Zagreb, the capital, which was uh, rocketed and so on. I said to myself, if I go out of this basement one day, I will have to do something for the others. And this for the others is my mentorship. I am volunteering that, and I'm so proud that I was selected to be one of the mentors in Branson Center. Well, it is Caribbean Center, but I have the pleasure to work with uh, uh, very, very uh, international teams. So uh, my life is dedicated to that, and I will further on push women entrepreneurship because uh, my experience was in United Nations Economic Commission, the part of working groups on uh, women entrepreneurship, on entrepreneurship, and I really live the life to support the other women to do the best and to show them to the world. Thank you, Katerina. I will come back to you again to know more about these things. But before this one, uh, Dr. Jinalton, and through your community, through admissions of women. So you are bringing the entrepreneurs together and helping them and supporting them. So what are the trends you are finding in the women entrepreneurs? Thank you so much. And um, you know, from, from my experience and really working globally as, as we're all doing, I, I believe that uh, one of the key trends we're all going to experience like across the board would be more and more um, women going into entrepreneurship, but really with a key focus on improving the quality of life for other women. And I think there is a, a terminology coined called like femtech, right? So um, if we if we look at, uh, for example, companies such as um, Taylor, Style Seat, Katie, <laughs> Kind Body, I think now there is. Um, uh, like a, a bigger drive in terms of taking care of yourself, taking care of your body, you know, that awareness is, is on the rise. And so I believe that more and more um, startups, I think is the right word, um, is, would, be, would be coming up, but really with a key focus on improving life for women. And um, also, basically, um, I think we, we see there is more, investment like more women are investing in those areas so for yes. example if we take the kind body or being kind to self health you know health care eating fertility whatever it is we're much more likely to you know purchase that uh, product or buy into that product or service if it's another woman who let's say has gone through that same process so it would if it's if, let's say a, even a mobile app on fertility i have a friend a sister friend uh, who's an entrepreneur in in ghana in africa and she went through um like a, a very long period of you know difficulty childbirth and so she set up a, a, an organization a business that really caters to women like that now because she's gone through that it is it gives all other women who come into contact with the organization, that confidence that actually you can appreciate what I'm going through. You can understand what my situation is. And therefore I am, I'm confident in, you know, buying into, into, into that business. And the, the, the rather phenomenal thing is that by 2025, so that really just five years, well, this year is more or less finished. Thank goodness. <laughs> So, you know, in, in as little as four years, that, that space alone is um, set to um, add, be like a $50 billion industry, right? So women, get this. If you're looking to start a business, that is one of the areas I would recommend, you know, to, to look at because in as little as four years, we're, we're, we're looking at $50 billion uh, industry just in that space. Um, alone, so um, it's it's quite exciting, and um, I think that most my colleagues have all talked about the lack of funding 
and the and the difficulty that women have in accessing finance, whether it's a traditional, you know, methods or VC or investor. And so um, I find that most women, certainly in our community, well, it's what I call the 50-50, right? 50-50 female entrepreneur, where their uh, their business is almost like a side hustle because they're still holding a career because, you know, like we say, a side hustle doesn't always pay the full bill. So I, I think that trend would continue to rise as well, where women would try to hold down um, a business, a career, whilst building, you know, that side um, a business until such time that it's able to provide the full pledge or financial security that they're looking for. So that's just a, a little, you know, bit in terms of um, where I'm seeing more and more within our community. So thank you, Dr. Tina Eldon. So in this point, uh, I would like to say that uh, you have talked about the women entrepreneurial journey. You know that we need to balance our life. You know, we have families and we have work life. So to balance that life, sometimes we just be confused. Sometimes we get frustrated. So and how technology can help us because so technology is everything right now. So using that technology, how we can balance our life and how we can move forward. Starting from Anna. Thank you, Beauty. I think this is an excellent question. And I think every woman who's been in this panel, we should all hear from each other. Because uh, there is no one recipe. Uh, no one has the recipe, and if you have it, you share it. Uh, but I'm going to share a few few things that I think are important, and I've seen through the years how have helped entrepreneurs and uh, myself. So the first thing is technology is there. Like it or not, technology is there. It's awesome. It works. Just make sure you're comfortable with it. Make sure you can use that and you're comfortable with the tools that are there. Not everything is for everyone and it shouldn't be that way. But make sure that the tools that are there, you can understand them and make use of it. For example, time management. Time management is key. We are multi multitasking woman doing multiple things at the same time, running multiple issues and solutions. Time management. Look at the softwares that are available. There are many options out there. Look for something that really suits your needs and help you plan ahead. Because when you have a better planning at the short, medium, and long term, most likely you'll be able to get there. When there is clarity of where you're going and how you're going to measure it, is more more likely you're gonna follow a path. Most most of the time we'll need baby steps or we'll need small steps. So it's good to be reminded by a support group or by a by a system that you might have. Where is the big picture? Where are we going? Because we're we're focusing sometimes in some uh, a specific short term uh, assignment. So time management and I think tools that are there are fantastic. Learn how to use it. Second, and project management in general. If you are starting something, if you don't know where to start, join EWC. If you're just starting with ideas and you need to understand how to structure a business, how um, I have an idea, and that's what I have. Well, guess what? All the business start with an idea. So that is doing the best place to start. Now, how do we move from an idea to a business? And that requires measurement, and that requires uh, uh, the interest of having KPIs. So understanding where you're going and where, where is valuable to put your time on. So when you're starting, I'll, I'll say in early stages, try to find co-founders, try to, to mingle with people that you can uh, kind of um, complement each other. Don't, do, don't try to do everything yourself. That's not going to work. So try to complement. Find a team that can work with you. If you're growing and if you're launching or you have launched and you've been growing, try to use um, applications that facilitate your life, meaning uh, use financial or, or especially everything that has to do with, with, with taxes, financial system. Automatize that as much as possible. Get it done. There's softwares out there. It really depends on the countries where you are. There are awesome softwares. You could spend time managing something that a software can do in minutes, 
and your time is important. So that is important, that will be important in the long term for investors or if you want to sell your company, but it's really, really important. Get your books ready since the beginning, clear since the beginning. That will save you a lot of headaches. Um, and the last one, as you said, managing our careers, and, and that sometimes doesn't necessarily need the software, but it needs um, that support system that nowadays is no physical connection, but nowadays we have it virtually, but we must have it. You're not by yourself. You're not fighting this fight by yourself. Like it's, it's already enough what we're going through. So just make sure you connect and you have your bubble. And there is so many groups and there's so many. Nowadays, I'm, I'm so passionate. I want to join all of them, but it's impossible, right? So try to find a group that really supports you, that you're aligned, that it's an expertise that you're looking or it's a mentor that you're looking sometimes uh, uh, having joining these this, this peer communities or mentor communities is, is super important. Katarina mentioned it. So I think uh, joining these programs, EWC is awesome. We do have an incredible line of mentors who are there to support you, who understand your needs, to so take advantage of it. Thank you, Anna Maria. You have said a very good points about the balancing your career and family life. Thank you so much for that. I want to know Katarina's opinion in this regard. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I also agree with Dina and Anna in, in uh, all what you said. And I see these days that the ladies uh, whom I talk to, and I, I really know them a lot these days on online, they say, I can do more. I even can manage to do uh, longer hours than I am in the office. So at the same time, I can manage my, my lunch, uh, I can uh, cook, I can take care of my child, I can uh, learn, I go to the internet. I can uh, talk to my clients, I make uh, Zoom seminars, etc. So it seems that technology is rapidly overnight, I would say, because of the pandemic, is changing all our lives, but for better, on one hand. On the other hand, social contact, our direct contact, is the best contact uh, we need to have as human beings, because otherwise we cannot feel the other person. We cannot understand how to how to negotiate, how to do business, how to uh, how uh, how to do anything in in this world. So I hope everything will will change very soon. But uh, in Croatia, I see that we are moving to 5G networks. Uh, the, uh, which will accelerate our uh, connect our, our connections faster, but also uh, due to to this pandemic, the the global health, every everybody's health on, in, on this planet, is um, uh, uh, really in the focus. So I presume that in the future, technology already plays and played a lot that will play a very crucial role in new small businesses, women businesses, which will tackle the issues of, of human health, even health tourism. You know that Croatia is a touristic country, uh, as many others. Every, every country is a touristic country. But we have to see the technology as the opportunity and um, uh, to strengthen uh, women economic impact. So uh, in this, uh, in this uh, context, I would like to say that the technology, innovation, and women entrepreneurship are the, the future focuses of the, of the global economies uh, 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 in general. Irina, thank you so much. Yes, it will have a great impact on our global economy. And if women contribute, the global economy definitely will shine. So as uh, my question to Dr. Tina is that you are a mom and you have a venture. How do you actually balance? things and what is your what do you want to suggest to other mother and the women entrepreneurs thank you i i always you know say there really is no no such thing as work-life balance right because uh, all it takes is something happening you know I've, I've got seven children if one child became sick i promise you i'm going to drop everything else and focus on that one child, including the other six kids, by the way, and they know it, right? Um, and likewise, you know, um, again, if let's say we're working on a business deal, a contract or whatever it is, 
something else would have to give because your focus shifts. So um, I, I always tell women that striving for this work-life balance is, is, is um, an unnecessary headache. You have to be realistic in the sense of that there is only so much we can control as far as like our world, as far as our environment, as far as the day goes, the month goes, the year goes. If you take 2020, how many, none of us could have predicted what was, you know, what, what's happened now. And so we, there, there isn't almost like um, uh, uh, a record or history to go and check and then cor course correct from there. So personally, I threw that out of the window ages ago. No work-life balance, good. But I can bring some, you know, stability. I can, I can bring a little more balance on a day-to-day -day basis in a way that makes my life work, in a way that makes uh, my family work, in a way that makes it work for my business and everybody else I get to serve. These are just practical, practical ways in terms of how I organize myself, I, how I manage myself, how I advise my, you know, clients to be. Number one, even if it's your own, you know, uh, business email, your your name at your business.com, whatever it is, use that to set up a Gmail, right? You don't have to have, you know, Tina at gmail.com. It can be Tina at whatever it is, but set that up through gmail.com. Why is that? Because you can then have that as a calendar on your phone, on your laptop, on your iPad, whatever that is. So whenever you have any type of task that you have to do, just put that in the diary. You can indicate it is not a meeting, so it doesn't take up time in your diary. But if it's something you need to sit down and focus on, then allocate time to that. Uh, the other good part of that is you can set it up. So every morning, um, mine is usually emailed like five o'clock in the morning uh, with my entire day schedule, right? So Google automatically will email you every day your entire day schedule. I look at my schedule before I go to bed. If I remember, I don't beat myself up if I don't remember. But in the morning, I will have a look at that and then I reprioritize in terms of What's my number one, number two, number three, number four, number five? If, if let's say, I got a call from school with one of the kids or whatever it is, what is the one thing that I must complete today? Because if I don't complete it, maybe I might be delaying my team on being able to move forward. But I, I appreciate not all of us have teams. Most um, of the women in our community, solopreneurs. So you, when you review it, just make an asterisk next to it, you know, or a piece of, I always have a, a small notebook, right? A, note, a notebook, it can be a small, tiny like that. Okay, this, is, this is actually a little book, but you can have a little uh, notebook. I have, I have notebooks everywhere, except now I can't find one. Uh, if I shout for one of the kids, uh, there's no school today, so my kids are in the other side of the house. If I shout to them, I get a little notebook. So I just write, you know, the date, and then that is my one task that no matter what, I need to have completed by three o'clock of that day. So it's not like by 11 o'clock because then my team will still be delayed. So by three o'clock of this afternoon, there's one task that come what may, I need to be able to complete. Um, that's that. And also I always recommend, you know, work on your business at least one hour every single day. And it can be a simple thing. I'm walking the kids to school. I might see a little spider web and then I might have a thought about life or whatever it is that I want to do a teaching. I take a photo on it. I record a voice note and I have an app called Evernote. So in the Evernote, you can put the photo in, you can put the voice note in, and then it means, I, I, you know, it might not necessarily translate into a blog, but I have still done something for my business because I can always go back to that and then put it together to create whatever, you know, assets that I wanted to create. And uh, the reason I recommend that is, and I've been there myself, where sometimes you feel guilty. I think all women, we feel guilty. We feel guilty that we're pursuing this. We feel guilty that we're doing this. We feel, you know, there's so many things that we feel guilty about. But if you do work on your business one hour every day, and that one hour isn't meaning I'm sitting down 11 o'clock to 12. 
It might not be. It might be 10 seconds here. It might be five minutes there. But the culmination of that becomes one hour, which means whenever I have that little voice, you know, guilty, you're not working on your business, you're not doing this, I can, I can turn around and tell that voice, no, I worked on my business seven hours this week. At the end of the year, I worked on my business 365 hours this year. Oh, you feel good already. It boosts your confidence. It boosts your, um, even your immune system, right? Because that guilty mind is, is no longer managing and taking control of yourself. So um, that's just practical pieces. And I love what you talked about, Anna, um, that when you start your business from the word go, make sure your finances is in order. And here is the cheat sheet. Again, I talked about opening a Google account, right? Open, having a Gmail with your business email, right? When you go to Google Drive and you, there's the plus button that says add or something new. If you go, whether it's a Word document or Excel sheet, there's always the option to choose from templates. So for those women, particularly, I see it time and time and time again, they don't know their numbers. They don't know their cash flow. They don't know their margin. These are all very important pieces that you need to know. Unless the person investing in your business is your uncle, I know I will ask you about your margins and your cash flow because I'm not your auntie and I'm not your uncle either. <laughs> and it's important to me. So go to add, you know, the Excel and then go to templates. There's various options, cash flow templates, um, margin, all of those. They're pre done for you templates that you even the formulas are already in there that you can just plug your numbers in most of them have explanation of what it is and just start with that as thank you thank you dr tina you have shared so many important things uh, using of technology in leveraging our our work life balance thank you so much uh, we are very end of our session but before to that one i would like to know about the uh, uh, sorry, Anna Maria Torres, any final remarks would you like to share with us that how technology can leverage all these things in our entrepreneurial journey? How technology, can you repeat the question? Yes, yes, how technology can leverage or uh, help us in supporting our entrepreneurial journey? Uh, absolutely. So nowadays we're in a very interconnected world. So yes. the great thing is that everything you do is instantly known to the world if you share it. So make sure that the solutions that you're bringing to the world, you can upload it into social media. You can let the world <laughs> what you're doing. You're not going to find customers. You're not going to find customers if nobody knows that you exist. So make sure that um, you leverage those technologies and you leverage the information that is there to facilitate that. <laughs> Nowadays, everything is visual. Make sure you use the, the, the channels and the apps, applications that are there. So you let the world know what you're doing and, and we can move on, on on that. So technology is critical for learning, again, for organizing ourselves, making sure that we have a management and a schedule. We, we, we reach our goals in the short, medium, and long term. But also, we make sure that we grow our business through technology, meaning we tell the world, we access to markets, we find customers, and we make sure we tap into the less costly processes. And this is one is really important. And technology can help us. Uh, you can allocate a budget for a specific tax that you want to reach, a, a campaign, a marketing media. And I'm going to give you an example when I was an entrepreneur myself. Uh, marketing was expensive, yes. but we ended up knowing that if you have a better strategy and you can communicate well what you're solving, you may find even influencers who love your product and will come and will share for you. So it's really important that you know how to communicate it and use the tools available for that because nobody's going to reach out to you if they don't know how to find you. Thank you so much, Anna, for the great information you have provided to us. So any final remarks from Katerina? Well, of course, technology, as I said before, is uh, really uh, possibly the, the only thing we have now 
to do whatever we want to do. And what Anna said, it is most important to, to share uh, valuable information and uh, women will uh, for sure use it for uh, their businesses online, but not only uh, also to uh, networking, education, uh, B2B, uh, skilling, reskilling, and many other uh, uh, necessary uh, uh, whatever information they would need. But also, uh, I would like to emphasize, I would like to call them my three pillars, which should not be neglected and never forgot, uh, which I call shortly edu, edu, uh, edu men. Uh, education really to facilitate mindset mindset change within the not only uh, communities but also uh, education system whereas uh, teachers uh, teach young guys to start thinking like entrepreneurs to act like entrepreneurs and then they will not feel this uh, the heavy burden of the failure in the future when they uh, fail because the failure should be trained in the in the, in the mindset of young people that it is like an, an experiment as, a, as when a scientist make hundreds of experiments to get something out good for the nation for the for the global uh, citizens then nobody can blame the scientist he is doing experiment and fails and fails and fails and on the hundred uh, step he he finally succeeds so if we could manage to teach children to experiment and experiment that would be very good for their mindset uh, entrepreneurial mindset then uh, the mentoring. Mentoring is crucial because all of us who have at least any experience can share that experience. And we are here and we live to share with other people. This is our human value we have to have in mind and do that whenever we can because somebody somewhere needs us. What we know and if we fail, we, we have to share that because we learn from that failure. And networking. Networking is the key to success. So uh, I would like to, to, uh, to, to really stress the importance and I would like to, uh, to, to really focus on Gen and the GW as a great, great, great project which actually uh, put together the whole world. When we were uh, at the beginning, we were only a few countries, but now it is 180 countries, 20, 200 countries, so it is amazing. Yes. There is a lot of opportunities. Yes. I believe that the future is absolutely positive. We just have to, to stay safe. We, we have to teach our children and, and youngsters to, to pay attention to those values. And then uh, women, of course, will work more and more from home. They will set up their businesses from home, which is fine, because if they employ only one person in the, in, in, in the community, this is great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Katerina. Uh, now I would like to invite Dr. Tina Anton for the final remarks. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. I would also reinforce what you've shared, uh, both Anna and Katerina, and come back to mentoring because you are able to actually um, save a lot of time, a lot of money, resources, and failure if you can learn from somebody's mistakes already and also you would get uh, you know a very um objective feedback if you will because your mentor always has your best you know interests at heart i would also say collaboration i think gone are the days where women don't work with one another now more so than ever is the time to work with one another if you take the human head there is hair there's eyes there is teeth right if you're in, in hair business, find an optician, find a dentist, find a beautician. And through social media, now you don't have to go around, you know, finding them. You can sit on Facebook, Twitter, wherever it is and find them and support one another, share each other's, you know, business um, activities and be able to have access to customers who already have a head. You also work on the head. So think you know, think with that sort of mindset and don't be afraid to collaborate with other women. 
Thank you so much, Dr. Tinaldo. Thank you to all of you for joining us and giving us a great lecture on the future trends of entrepreneurship and how technology can support these things. And I loved the way you have given us the advices. Thank you so much for joining. And I would like to thank all of my audience, those who have joined us. The key station is that we have already know that the future will be changing what you need to do is that you need to have the capacity of taking the mentorship those who are expert in your field if you can take the mentor you will be able to shine in the life so and you have to educate yourself you have to collaborate you have to make the partnership then we can see the changes in the society and change in, at the global level thank you so much for being with us hope to see you in our next session thank